You've seen on ESPN3, you've seen Minneapolis, and it is a good one. It is, a, we got a, a heavyweight main event between Francis Ngannou and Junior Dos Santos, number two versus number three, respectively. And there is a lot of, there are a lot of title implications around this fight, and rightfully so. I mean, they're the most highly ranked guys in the division after Stipe Miocic, who is the next one to challenge for the title. So it's only logical that the winner of this fight will, you know, go on to challenge the winner between Stipe Miocic and Daniel Cormier. So before I get to uh, the rest of the card, uh, let's just sort of break down the main event, because there's been a lot of talk from Junior Dos Santos. Uh, he, about this fight, I know he he's challenged boxing champion Deontay Wilde, or hasn't challenged, but he said he wants to challenge him, and he's shooting for the title. And I do think he will be getting a uh, another shot of a title actually after his fight because I do see him winning over Francis Ngannou. Uh, the first round is going to be very important, very telling of a fight. And if Francis Ngannou does win, the first round is definitely where he does it. That's 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 my opinion. But let's break it down a little bit here and get to why uh, why I think uh, Dos Santos comes out on top here. So everybody knows Francis Ngannou, he is a killer with dynamite in his fists. Uh, a lot of his finishes are in the first or second round. Uh, if we take a look look at just his, uh, his UFC run, because those are the fighters that I personally am most, uh, uh, know most about. Uh, so his first two fights and then second round and then Dr. Snob between second and third and then we have a string of four straight first round uh, knockouts. He's coming off of two first round knockouts now as well. So he's definitely an early finisher by choice. Uh, there are certain fights where he has to sort of, like his UFC debut against Luis Henrique, I mean, a little bit of octagon jitters. I don't think any of us see Luis Henrique as an elite uh, heavyweight or light heavyweight fighter as such. But it was more of a sort of Francis Ngannou coming into his own and, and establishing establishing himself in the UFC. Curtis Blades, a uh, different type of fighter now. Who we've seen him uh, find tons of success now since that fight, and or well, not discounting the rematch where he got knocked out again. But but uh, Curtis Blades, strong wrestling base. Uh, not the flashiest fighter as such, but definitely one who can give you problems and make you think and second-guess some of your attacks. But since then, pretty much when he's been put up against uh, someone with a mostly striking base, he has finished early. Now, he has two losses in the UFC, Stipe Miocic and Derek Lewis. Uh, the fight against Miocic was uh, one of the worst beatings that uh, we've seen in a long time in a UFC heavyweight fight. And uh, the fight with Derek Lewis was one of the worst beatings that us viewers took in a long time, because that fight sucked. It was three rounds of aggressive staring. Uh, it was like ultimate staring championships. It was, uh, and at least these two fighters will be the first to tell it. I mean, Derek Lewis actually joked about it afterwards about how that was like one of his worst fights ever. So, so that's that fight's a little bit hard to take into analysis here. But one thing that I do see from uh, uh, from Junior dos Santos, uh, which I do think will be the, the key to victory here, is variety. Uh, I mean, he's. He never uses it, uh, and it's been questioned by Francis Ngannou, but he does have a BJJ black belt, uh, and he is capable. I mean, I don't think he actually has any submission victory. Yeah, he does have one submission victory, but I'm pretty sure that's before his UFC career. Yeah, it's just, that was his second fight ever um, against someone I've never heard of. But if we look at the difference in some of the statistics here, uh, and statistics is a good place to start, uh, and not necessarily to finish. So, Junior Dos Santos, his four out of his five first wins in the UFC actually were in the first round. But we see him sort of start to, once the, the level of competition ramps up a little bit, we see him sort of start to take his time and, and just be more patient with his movement and with his attacks. Uh, the fight to Sh with Shane Carwin comes to mind. I mean, for those you know young young MMA fans watching this, they're probably thinking Shane who. But <laughs> way back when, uh, Shane Carwin, he was uh, he was like the next big thing in heavyweight. Uh, he was knocking everybody out. He knocked out Frank Mir. 
then he was really close to winning the UFC title against Brock Lesnar, very close to winning him at first round, but uh, ended up uh, gassing himself out and uh, then submitted him a second. Uh, Dos Santos had a very smart, very workmanlike performance against Shane Carwin, where he truly dominated. I mean, he, he not that he made it look easy, but it, I mean, it, it was just like, despite everybody thinking that Carwin is this big, scary striker or you know, knocking everybody out, Dos Santos used just like tactics and technique and combinations to t slowly wear Carwin down and just pick him apart with hard shots. I mean, we're not talking like a sort of like. 100 Diaz strikes of picking apart, but more of, you know, obviously more spread out heavyweight strikes. Uh, if we take a look at uh, some of the other fights here, uh, we've got Decision versus uh, Roy Nelson. We've got, uh, and like Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt's also a fantastic power puncher. Very rare to see Junior Dos Santos taking his time, not getting too reckless. I do recall him getting clipped by a hard shot there, but he recovered. Uh, the first fight with Stipe Miocic is also a similar fight where he can kind of like use combinations in a sense that you don't always necessarily see from heavyweight fighters, certainly not from Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou will f throw fewer but harder strikes, uh, pretty much exclusively punches, whereas Dos Santos will throw more strikes uh, in wider variety. Uh, throw in a couple kicks every now and then. I mean, we all saw his knockout win over Mark Hunt. And then, uh, once he does get to the ground, we saw that against Tai Tuivasa. Um, he, he can definitely give uh, Ngannou problems on the ground. Uh, I think everyone's pretty well aware of the fact that Francis Ngannou does have... Uh, I mean, if you're going to find one hole in his game, it's his ground game. So the way I see it, the moment this goes past the first round, uh, Dos Santos' chances of winning this fight have at least doubled. Uh, because everybody knows that, I mean, with a build and a body type that Ngannou has, it is going to be hard for him to go the full five rounds and be completely comfortable. I mean, he definitely wants to finish early. But the way I see it, the variety, experience, uh, combinations, and the style of attack, uh, more of a measured tactical boxer approach, uh, you know, in and out, in and out uh, from Dos Santos, as opposed to Ngano's uh, power heavy, uh, you know, more singular strikes. Uh, I see Dos Santos not trying to get in exchanges like the way that uh, uh, Alistair Overeem did and then got promptly knocked out. Uh, Dos Santos, his key to victory here, in and out, keep stay light on my feet, not stay inside the clinch for too long, but you know, get slowly get away with these shots, throw in a couple leg kicks, things like that, just to make Ngano think. A little bit of clinch, perhaps, against the cage, uh, some dirty boxing, some cage work, just to slowly wear down Ngano, who will undoubtedly get tired after the first round. And uh, from there, I just see uh, Dos Santos picking up the pace. Simultaneously, while Ngannou slows down, and uh, I think we will see a third or fourth round finish from uh, from Dos Santos.